Uh, in this video, what I'm going to talk about is ionic bonding. Now, ionic bonding is something which happens when oppositely charged ions, like the ions I showed you in the last video, when when they're oppositely charged, what happens is they are attracted to each other because opp oppositely charged things attract each other. And so when they attract each other, the, the force of attraction between them, and it's an electrostatic force because they're both electrically charged objects and they're not really moving anywhere. They're just, you know, attracted to each other. So we call this an electrostatic attraction and the name that the name we use to describe the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions is oh boy okay last video uh -oh. anyway the, the name we use to describe the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions is um ionic bonding and so we we say ionic bonding in as a reference to that you know, the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ion, the force, yeah, the force of attraction. And in this video, what I want to take a look at is some of the different ionic compounds which can form. And ionic compounds are basically the the species or the, the, the substances formed when ionic bonds are formed between op two oppositely charged ions. So let's take a look at... Um, a very a very uh, common example so let's take a look at the formation of regular table salt so sodium na nacl sodium chloride so when sodium and chlorine react they form they can form sodium chloride and the way this happens if i draw out the, the sodium here the way this happens is that the sodium na I'm going to draw out the sodium's electronic structure. I believe it has 11 electrons. And a, yeah, 11 electrons. And chlorine has, well, I'll check out how much it has after. So chlorine, I mean, sodium, 11 electrons. So that's going to be 1, 2, 8 plus 2 is 10. Okay, it's going to need another one. So I'm going to just draw out the, so the the electrons of sodium, and what I'm going to do is use um, blue dots to represent the one, yeah, blue dots to represent the uh, to represent the uh, the electrons. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that you can distinguish between the electrons from sodium and the electrons from chlorine, and because I'm going to draw chlorine here, and I'm going to draw the electrons for chlorine with. Um, crosses and since this sodium is an ion well I'm, I'm, I'm not actually going to leave this these these square brackets on here I'll just we don't need them it's not that necessary right now so I'm just going to draw up the uh, electrons so we've got two electrons in here and we've got eight electrons around here so one two three four five six seven eight and then we've got the one electron on the outside. And now I can go on to draw chlorine. So chlorine, I'll use green for that since chlorine is like, you know, somewhat green. Cl. So we, chlorine has, I think it has, um, nine electrons oh no it doesn't have nine that's fluorine chlorine has 17 17 electrons okay so now drawing on these 17 electrons uh which i'll use crosses to represent so we have two here Actually, I'll use a slightly thicker pen for that. We have a cross here, cross here. Then we have the eight electrons in this um, shell. So we have 10 now. And then we've got to do seven in the outer shell. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we have a total of seven electrons and um we have an empty space here 
and chlorine really wants to have a noble gas electronic configuration and so does i mean chlorine really wants to have a, a noble gas electronic configuration and he wants the electronic configuration of argon right and so what he needs to do to get this electronic configuration is take the electron from the sodium and sodium wants elect, um, to get the noble a noble gas electronic configuration and it wants the configuration of neon so what they're going to do is strike a little deal and sodium is going to give chlorine it one electron and by giving it that electron not only is sodium going to form a noble gas structure but chlorine is also going to form a noble gas structure and aside from that they're both going to form ions so if i draw out this again so i'll just i'll just copy and paste this actually edit copy edit paste so now i have nacl if i now draw on the um electron which has been transferred so this blue dot let me let me uh, use that tool here so what's happening is the the electron is going to move from here to Oh no, that's the wrong tool. It's going to move from here and it's going to go over here and join onto here. And so sodium no longer has that electron on its in its structure. But it doesn't mind. It doesn't mind because it's now got the configuration of a noble gas. And these are now ions. Not only are they ions, they are oppositely charged ions. And Sodium has a 1 plus charge, so Na plus, and chlorine has a 1 minus charge, so it's Cl minus. And these two uh, ions are oppositely charged, so they were gonna, they're gonna attract, they're gonna be attracted to one another, and it's gonna be an electrostatic uh, attraction. And this, this electrostatic attraction is the ionic bond. So this now is a um, an ionic compound which has been formed through the ionic bond between two oppositely charged ions and so this ionic compound um, here is going to have the name sodium and it's not going to be called sodium and chlorine obviously sodium chloride 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 since it's a chloride ion now and so that is the formation of an ionic compound and if we were to take maybe um, a different ionic compound, maybe one which has uh, uh, more, than, more than two atoms in it. So maybe one which has three atoms which come together to form an ionic compound. Like, uh, let me look at the periodic table. Like maybe magnesium, magnesium fluoride. Magnesium fluoride. And for this particular representation, what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna um, ignore the outer, the inner shell electrons. So what I'm all, all I'm gonna draw is the outer shell electrons for this particular one. So magnesium is here, and magnesium has magnesium has two uh, cross electrons in its outer shell, and the dot and cross. All it really is there for is to distinguish between the ones that belong to magnesium and the ones that belong to chlorine. It, it, they're practically pretty much the, the same they're the same but they just we just show basically uh, showing a guide for where the electrons went and the chlorine uh so here we uh put the chlorine up and chlorine is gonna have seven electrons in its outer shell seven so one One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're not only going to have one of these chlorine atoms, we're going to have two of them. Because magnesium has two. Ooh, what? What just happened? Because magnesium has two electrons, and um, chlorine only, each chlorine atom only really wants one. 
So rather than the, that other electron going to waste, what happens is two elect two chlorine atoms can now come in on this deal, and one of the electrons from magnesium will go to the chlorine. So what happens is one of these electrons goes here. Oh no, I did not just do that. All right, I just um, did crosses everywhere by accident. Uh, I will change this up and put dots here instead. So dots, dots, yeah. Yeah, so these are dots now. These are the magnesium electrons. I know they look quite big, but yeah. So what's gonna happen here is the electrons are gonna go from here to, one is gonna go here and one is gonna go here. And if we now draw out the chemical, like the, the formula of, of the magnesium chloride, using the square brackets, we're gonna have the magnesium, so magnesium, which is just gonna have an empty shell. I'm not gonna draw the inner shells. And this is gonna have a two plus charge. And then next to this magnesium, we're gonna have the chlorine. So I'm gonna draw one chlorine on either side of this magnesium. So there we go, Cl. And the chlorine is gonna have uh, eight electrons in its outer shell since it's now got one from, each one has got one from the magnesium. I'm trying to get a good circle here. It, it seems to be uh, flopping. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll bear, bear with that that one. So we have here, we have one electron from the magnesium on each one, and the rest of them are gonna be crosses. So the crosses which are just Chlorine's original atoms. So cross here, cross, 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 cross. There we go. So this is basically the, um, the compound which is formed when magnesium and chlorine form an ionic compound through the donation of electrons and the well, donation and acceptance. And this would be called magnesium chloride magnesium chloride now i want to take a quick look at the periodic table to to see um which uh elements are most likely to form ionic compounds and the ones which tend to form ionic compounds are the ones on the far left and the far right excluding the noble gases so these compounds usually like forming ionic compounds and and right now i'm talking about the ones which form singular ionic compounds so it's not compound ions forming them but um single ions forming them so it tends to be these so these 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 elements and these elements since these ones have only like six or seven in the outer shell six or seven electrons in the outer shell and these tend to have these only these have one or two so these don't need to expend that much energy to lose those electrons and these don't need to um expend that much energy to gain that elect gain those electrons so they like they these two like getting involved in ionic bonding and one of the other things which contributes to this um tendency for these two to con to engage in ionic bonding is the difference in electronegativity you may have noticed that these are far on the left and if you remember the ones on the left are very uh, generous with electrons generous gen ge generous gen generous generous with the electrons and the ones on the right on the other hand are quite greedy with electrons so greedy and I'm gonna change color to red now and draw a. Uh, uh. <laughs> These are quite greedy with electrons, and so and uh, due to the fact that they are very electronegative and these aren't very electronegative, and so these aren't gonna to want to steal electrons. These are the ones who are gonna to want to um, have more of a tendency to give away their electrons, and so that's why they like forming ionic bonds. And you can imagine that these ones in group one have one electron in the outer shell. 
So what these ones in group one are going to do are form one plus ions and the ones in the group two are have two electrons in the outer shell. So they're going to form two plus ions. So one plus and two plus. And these ones here are going to gain electrons. So their charge is going to become negative. And oxygen is in group six and the full shell usually has eight electrons. Uh, so these ones are going to want to um, gain two electrons and form two minus ions and these ones are have seven and they want just one more to form that eight just just one more and so these ones are going to want to uh gain one electron so it's going to have a one minus charge most of the time so yeah this is uh how uh, ionic compounds would more or less form so i hope this video was helpful and i'll see you in the next video